Welcome back to Across the Board with Ian the Colonel here on Hawk Radio, hawkradio.org, as always, and across the board, radio.com. Find us either way. One of my favorite up-and-coming bands, a newer band, but this is one that I, I'm telling you, in, in 15, 20 years, we're going to say, hey, we heard them back then, you know, when their first EP came out and their first album. Uh, one of the best bands to ever come out of Australia, for sure. Absolutely. Closure in Moscow. And Chris uh, DeCinque is with us right now. Chris, how's things right now? Really, really good, thanks. Nice. We appreciate you uh, sticking with us here. I know it's a little bit later in Australia. You said you're, uh, you guys are home in Melbourne right now, but uh, we appreciate it. And I know uh, all the Australian fans and fans across the world listening right now uh, are psyched to hear from you guys. So um, we were just talking off air. You've just incorporated uh, a little while ago a new drummer, and now you have uh, the new bassist as well, uh, Duncan. And uh, how's that working out so far? Yeah, it's uh, been really, really good things have probably been the best they've ever been and it's really exciting to have yeah a brand new rhythm section to work with and they've both got really good funk and jazz chops which has been fun to mess around with so yeah we're loving it at the moment and you guys are still pretty young i figure my math if my math is correct you guys are about what mid 20s about 24 25 right yeah i'm i'm actually the oldest i'm 25 and yeah everyone else is under me so yeah. And it's that's it's amazing to me. I mean, obviously you're not you know teenagers, but still, you guys are so musically tight. Uh, now I haven't heard you guys with the, the new rhythm section, but the older stuff off of uh, you know, the, the first temple and the penance and the patience. Musically, you guys are so tight together. Does that you know, again being so young? That's amazing. Does that come from a lot of rehearsal together, or is it just a natural feel for the music? I think uh, it's a a lot of both I guess like we're all pretty uh, committed to our own instruments personally like we're always playing so I guess uh, it's just partly as well I think just that magical combination of uh, people like it's a really good dynamic and now so even more with the new guys it's just yeah we just I think we're all very like minded musically and we get each other's musical language so to speak okay now with a new, when you, I assume you're going to start working on a new album as soon as you get everything gelled with the rest of the band members. What would that bring differently as opposed to what the previous sound was? Um, well, I think just in terms of the way we've been writing stuff now, things feel a lot more productive when we're just jamming out stuff. Like uh, that seems a lot more fruitful now, which is really really good. So I guess the new stuff you can it translates into listening back you can hear that a lot it sounds a lot more uh, jammed out now as opposed to uh pre-constructed by one member like they demoed on on their own and then brought to the band okay Fair nice enough. that yeah. makes sense now in your videos you seem you particularly chris seems super high energy i cannot imagine what your live shows are like i know you guys have played you know south by southwest and you know warp tour kind of every, you play a little bit of everything out Sound there wave. Um, Soundwave, of course, absolutely have to play Soundwave. Uh, what are you, we haven't gotten to see your live shows yet? I know you guys are playing a lot of shows back home in Australia. When you come anywhere all over the world, you know, to the states or anyone listening right now gets to see you, what can they expect in your show? Uh, they can expect to be transported to the fifth dimension. Nice. That sounds like something I would want to go see. Now, how do you get yourself uh, psyched up for the, you know, for the shows? Like I said, I'm mainly looking at the videos, uh, you know, and those are incredible. I mean, like I said, you're you're all over the place in those. I mean, you drinking a lot of coffee before you do that, or is it just like the music gets in you when you take off? Uh, I think I just channel uh, a different uh, identity when I'm performing. Like I'm pretty pretty introverted and shy in uh, day-to-day activities but well, i guess when i get up on stage i yeah i just channel uh channel some entity and <laughs> yeah it's just uh i think all all the aggression and frustration and joy and all the extreme emotions seem to bubble out then that's when it all sort of uh comes to a boil yeah i can i can see that absolutely happening um when you a lot of people like to compare and, and say, you sound like this band, you sound like that band. I don't want to do that. I want to talk about what 
kind of music you seem to fall into. I almost feel like it's prog rock almost, you know, with the long form songs, and it's just that high energy, really tight music. Like like he said earlier, I mean, it's just it's amazing. The first time I heard the first song I heard of yours was Vanguard, right? And I was hooked right from the go. Would that be an accurate representation of the genre of music? Maybe progressive rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, it's a hard one. I mean, there's definitely elements of that. It's I wouldn't call it strictly prog. I mean, right. It, it's it's hard. It's like I guess it's hard to see the forest from the trees. So I can't. Right. It's hard for me to sort of uh, look at it objectively from afar and be able to. I mean, it's all rock and roll, really. At the end of the day, so That's right. I guess it, it falls under the umbrella of rock. So, I mean, I I think we're a, yeah a rock band with some prog elements maybe but right. I mean I wouldn't want to limit ourselves to that because I think no. the no. next uh, release is going to dabble in some other areas and yeah just I, we, we, we all have a pretty wide range of influences so yeah it who knows what's going to happen next that's great. Always, you know, never know what to expect from you guys. Everything will be fresh. That's great. Across the board with Ian the Colonel here with Chris DeCinque from Closure in Moscow. Speaking of, where did the band name come from? You're, you're from Australia, Closure in Moscow. What, what's the idea behind that? Um, well, I wasn't actually in the band when uh, it was given the name, so I'm actually... <laughs> Not quite sure myself. It seems to be shrouded in mystery, and I've I was gonna, really gotten a straight answer. I was going to say that. they they never uh, they never told you they never shared that with you. No, it it, it seems to be uh, something that the other guys want to keep a secret. <laughs> that's it's kind of so creepy. I, I kind of like it like that because I think I draw my own uh, conclusion as to what it means, and I think if people that like us can come conjure up their own images to what it means to them. I mean, that's that's kind of cool that it can be ambiguous. You need to come up with some weird off-the-wall story that completely has nothing to do with it at all. Yeah, just tell a different story every time. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I'm, I might actually start doing that. I'll just uh, concoct some ridiculous story. Yeah, just tell them you're communist and all this kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> and just The guys in the band be like, whoa, dude, 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 wait, we got to tell you the truth. Uh, you guys really have a great seem to have a great sense of humor. You know, I've watched the webisodes that you that you did when you were making the last album, and hopefully you'll do more of those. But I, you did a you so. did a parody of the intro to Baywatch, which was hilarious in one of them. And you actually you recorded the first album, you know, in the U.S. on a farm. And in some of the webisodes, you guys were actually doing farm work. Can we expect more of these webisodes and, and that kind of, I guess? showing your personality and your sense of humor uh, when you're making the next album? Uh, we're actually, before we release the next album, we're doing a live recorded video EP, I guess you could call it. Okay. Right. Uh, it's going to be four new songs uh, filmed and recorded live. And I guess throughout that, there's also going to be some other stuff and there'll be some stuff of us uh, preparing it and... Yeah, I mean, we always want to show, uh, you know, other sides of us besides just uh, what's up on stage and what's what's going on when we're actually playing songs and whether it be uh, humorous or insightful or a- anything. Like, I, I think it's always good to uh, to show that you're multifaceted. For sure. Is it true that you sold your vehicles to make the first EP to get Chris, yeah, to get Chris I, Cornell I to do it? I sold a car and quit a job. Well, I sold a car to help fund uh, our EP when we first did that, and then I quit a job to be able to tour. Wow. That's that's a <laughs> lot of sacrifice to make. What about Chris Cromit that really you had to sell your car to get him? Why him? What made him so appealing? At the time, we were thinking about a few different producers over here, and for the budget that we had, it was just really hard to settle with someone that we thought uh, we'd be satisfied with. So we thought, you know what, let's just try, email a bunch of people from America that we're into that we think would do a good job and just see if anyone 
uh, writes back or shows any interest, you know, weren't really expecting much. We were pro- weren't really expecting anyone to write back at all. And uh, Crummett straight away wrote back, and he was really keen. And wow. he said, I'll, I'd love to come over and do it, which uh, worked out amazing. So, yeah, we got him to come over, and then that was that. Now, you're only two albums deep. Have you uh, recouped the car, or have you bought a new car yet? I actually don't really have a permanent car. I still live uh, with my parents and my sisters, so I'm always sort of hopping around between sisters and parents' cars. <laughs> nice. How does the family uh, like your music? Are they are they into the rock, or uh, you know, is your sister more into pop music like Justin Bieber or something? I assume she's younger. I, that's a complete assumption. I don't know. Yeah, I've got I've got four younger sisters, but they're all they're all pretty into uh into the band, which is good, I guess. And uh, yeah, actually, my youngest sister is quite influenced by me, and she she listens to like Björk and Jeff Buckley, which is really really cool. Nice, right. Jeff. You know they're actually doing a, a a movie. I just saw a thing about that. They're actually doing a movie on uh, Jeff Buckley's life, which should be interesting. Really? Yeah, some guy from um, a CW show, uh, Gossip Girl or something like that, is going to be in it. Should be interesting. That Jeff, should be. I he, love. Is he playing Jeff Buckley? Yeah, he is. Yeah, it should be. I hope it's a good. I don't know. I'm a big Jeff Buckley fan. Right. You know what, Chris? I I can see you pulling off Last Goodbye or something like that. Would you? You have that that high range. Do you have a low range that you could do a song like that? Some kind of something, Jeff Jeff Buckley. Uh, I don't know if I could. I think it'd be sacrilege to touch uh, <laughs> anything of his. I mean, he's he's insane. Like, or he was insane. Right. It was just ridiculous. Like, Grace is definitely one of those desert island. If you could only have one album on a desert island, that would be it for sure. Well, that would be. Uh, a massive contender for it. Yeah, I consider him like uh, in the same vein, sort of as Jimi Hendrix, where it was a light that burned so bright, you know, yeah. it only burned for a small amount of time, and it's, that that was a shame. Uh, Jeff Buckley there. Uh, tell us about some of the, the better Australian bands coming up. You know, uh, in the U.S. here, we hear a lot of good bands, but you know, when people when you say name an Australian band, people will come up with Silverchair or ACDC. Who are some of the other uh, great bands coming up out there? Uh, there's a band that we're actually friends with from here in Melbourne called Secrets in Scale, okay. and they are absolutely incredible. They're, they've got, I don't know how to even explain it, they're, they're a little on the prog side as well. Okay. They've got the same sort of epic uh, rift as like Zeppelin, and I don't know, they're very, very old school in a lot of ways, but nice. also... Doing something really cool and new. It's they're really good. Secrets and scale. I definitely recommend uh, to you guys and the listeners to check them out for sure. Oh yeah, we'll definitely. Do Chris, you'll have to uh, email us uh, their contact information. We'll look into them. Love to have them definitely. on the show as well. And uh, we, you mentioned, you know, if you were stuck on a desert island, Grace is one of the albums you would have. We like to ask uh, most of our guests if you knew you only had say five to ten minutes left in in your life. What one song would you want to listen to or perform? Can be yours or anybody else's. Could I get an extension to eighteen minutes? It can be eighteen minutes for sure. It can be eighteen thirty. Okay. Uh I would spend the last eighteen minutes of my life listening to Close to the Edge by Yes with uh, a joint in hand and that would be it. <laughs> nice. That's a good point. Actually, is is marijuana legal in Australia? Uh, it's not legal. It's it's pretty much a similar situation. It's I think they're a little more lenient here. Oh, okay. okay. But there's definitely no uh, medical marijuana type uh, deals like in California or anything. Right. Yeah. That's a good call though. That's a, nobody said that song. I, that's I, you know, Ian, you know how much I like yes. Yeah, and, you're a big yes fan. That's 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 a great answer to hear. I was very surprised to hear that. Oh, it's 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 the greatest song in rock and roll history I think I mean <laughs> but like the other one obviously the obvious one is Bohemian Rhapsody but there's something about close to the edge I don't know there's just uh, it's ridiculous I could listen to that song every day and it's there's so much in there to to like sink your teeth into and to pull apart that you could never ever get sick of it and it's just so depth that crescendo, like the I get up, I get down, 
like the last time that happens, like the massive like tension and release of that, it 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 gives me shivers every time. It's really incredible. It's incredible to hear you just describe it, man. That was deep. I like that. So <laughs> if you were to meet someone like, you know, Steve Howe or Jeff Buckley, you know, if that were possible, would that make you starstruck? Oh, I de- someone like Steve Howe for sure, just because he is, to, to me, an absolute freak of nature. He's not human. Someone like Steve Howe, definitely. I think I'd be starstruck by someone like that for sure. Right. See that that I could I, w- I would be the same way I'd probably be stunned if I if I were to stand up and and you know Steve Howe's there I'm what do I say you know yeah you're just like dumbfounded right you're, yeah uh, now Chris you guys have actually worked as session ma- uh, musicians on a Johnny Craig album Johnny Craig another incredible artist actually out of Canada uh, what what exactly how did that come about I guess you guys working with a Canadian artist and um, what did you do as a session musician on that. Yeah, he's actually been working with Crummit for a long time as well, uh, like with Dance, Gavin Dance and Emerosa. He's done a lot of sessions with Crummit and he was in Port, we were based out of Portland, Oregon while we were living in the US. Right. And that's where Crummit's based as well. And Johnny was in Portland at the time tracking for his album and Crummit asked us if, yeah, we'd want to come down and lend a hand and do some harmonies and Barrett did a couple of guitar parts on two songs I think and yeah so that's how that came about since you guys have only been touring for a little while now I guess a few years and again some major major tours have you asked for anything crazy in your rider yet your contract rider to have in your dressing room or on the tour bus Uh, I think the craziest thing might actually be Vegemite I think we've We've asked for Vegemite, and that's, <laughs> I think that's the limit of the craziness because, yeah, I don't feel like we're at quite at the stage yet where we can start making a preposterous uh, request. And I guess something that a lot of people don't know, I think, is that the artist actually has to pay for what they ask for in the rider. It comes out of their touring budget, right. um, but yeah. just asking for crazy things uh, is good in, is in general. So then what's the what's the generic timeline then what do we I mean I know you guys are writing now when do you expect to be in the studio uh, roughly about when a new album and touring um well this video EP that we'll be doing will be happening in the next couple of months or so and then we'll be continuing to write after that for the album and then the album probably the start of next year I dare say I'm not exactly sure because Obviously, with a new lineup and stuff, we've completely had to sort of go back to square one with a lot of things. But right. I think, uh, yeah, definitely by the start of next year, and it'll definitely be worth the wait. So Actually. far, Chris, what is your favorite song that you've put out with Closure in Moscow? I saw another interview with you that, that you said at the time, Kissing Cousins was your favorite because you felt that you could really put forth the emotion in that song. Uh, I think Entropy is my favorite song. I know, Colonel, I think you're going to say Vanguard, Vanguard, right? Yeah, so hard to pick, I'll tell you. But if you had a, a favorite, which would it be? Definitely a toss-up between Deluge and Kissing Cousin. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know, something about those two just feel really good. There's so much energy in, in all the songs, too. And to be able to 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 bleed that through the microphone and, and through your instruments... It just says a lot. I mean, really, I. That's why I was hooked the first time I heard you. It did, didn't matter. It was just a light went on. Mm-hmm. And when you said beginning of next year, I'm now I'm going to put that on my calendar and eagerly count down each and every day until <laughs> you know new 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 projects come out. Because, to hear it and to be able to see you guys uh, live would be incredible. Yeah, I think absolutely. If you could tour with any band uh, that would open for you or they would open, you know, uh, you're opening for them. Who would it be? Uh, living or can it be bands that have broken up or died or You're, sure yeah whatever man you're answering so uh, whatever your your fantasy is wow oh okay um, I'd have to probably yes I think but like 73 to 75 yes nice yeah. at that stage when they like if we could get a time machine to bring them to the present from that era and we could do some kind of crazy joint set where we collaborated and did like a big, massive 
uh, like combined set where we were, we were all playing together. I think that would be pretty spectacular. That'd be fun. That would be great. I know there yeah. there are a lot of TV shows that do that kind of thing nowadays. That'll put bands together, you know, sort of a mashup or whatever. But uh, I can see that. I mean, not to blow your head up too much, Chris, but I can really see you guys well, hanging with Yes and that type of band. I can see you guys doing something really good with, like, even like Rush. Yeah, John or, Anderson is still touring. He's still yeah. doing tours. He just recently played in this area. He did, yeah. So you know, I could I could see that happening. It seems like it would be a very. Well, I mean, you can't well, do the. 30 years ago part but it, you know it's still it could be a possibility we'll see if we can hook it up yeah right we'll, we'll pull some strings over here uh chris uh how can everybody keep in touch with you guys well that'd be the last thing we dropped there uh you know facebook uh, i i know your, your facebook and your website are a little bit bare are those going to be more active soon yeah def- uh where with yeah we've just been sort of uh heads down sure asses up <laughs> rehearsing and <laughs> yeah, trying sure. to churn out some new stuff but that'll all be uh, coming awake again very soon. And, yeah, but you can, like, I check the emails always. You can email us uh, through our website, mm-hmm. and you can drop us the line on Facebook and all the other usual uh, social outlets. Closureinmoscow.com, again, is uh, is the website. And uh, the Penance and the Patience is the EP. Go out and get that. And uh, First Temple, uh, just amazing. We, ha- we have the entire album here. And I'll tell you, it's funny yeah. because I- I'm ashamed to say we actually hadn't heard of you guys until, I don't know, probably, what, six months ago or so? Right. We're here at the radio station, and the song comes on, and it's Vanguard. And it's just in our, our automatic rotation. And we both looked at each other. We were like, what the hell is this song? Man, this is incredible. We look, and we're like, <laughs> who's Closure in Moscow? So we started doing the research, and we're like, I don't know why we haven't heard of these guys. but And, and now we are just... Listening to you constantly. I know Colonel and I it's, are, are it's both major currently fans. Currently in my CD player in my car right now. Yeah, it's on my iTunes too. So awesome. <laughs> we're big you. fans. So uh, this has been uh, Chris DeCinque from Closure in Moscow. Closureinmoscow dot com. Check these guys out. You will not be disappointed. You have my guarantee on it. Ease guarantee. This is across the board with Ian the Colonel. We'll be back on a few in a few minutes right here on acrosstheboardradio.com dot com and Hawk Radio. Hawk Radio. Hawkradio.org. dot org. <laughs>